Welcome to the Happiness Happens Podcast. I'm Simona Nicole, host of the show, mindset coach, and motivational speaker. I've made it my mission to help you get unstuck, shift your mindset, and understand your worth to help you live your most purposeful life. Each week, I will bring you an idea, guest, or a positive thought that will leave you inspired and empowered to win your life. We decide the stories we tell ourselves and where we invest our energy. I'm so grateful you popped in. Now let's dive in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode on the Happiness Happens podcast. I am so excited for today's guest um, because we're going to be talking all things money, money, money. And um, this is something that just hypes me up so much. So, so, so much. So we have Malia and she is a female millennial money coach. After learning about the world of financial literacy, she paid off $20,000 in student loans in 10 months and bought her first car with cash. She started this journey, uh, since she started this journey, she has been so inspired to help and educate as many young women along the way. And she finds there's no greater feeling than guiding and supporting women to, um, building their dream life by getting confident about their money and empowered with their financial decisions. So welcome to the show. Mona, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. And I'm so excited that you're so excited. Okay. I know. I think the energy is just like pulsating <laughs> through. I don't know. I'm feeling like it is. Um, so I would love, you know, to sort of kick us off. If you could just tell, you know, everyone who's listening just a little bit about the journey that's brought you to where you are in, in the industry that you're in. Yeah, so a little bit like my bio said, in college, I actually came across this like free money course that this guy was doing on our campus. And I just had this epiphany, like, oh my gosh, why am I not going to these? So I ended up going to every single one throughout the rest of the semester. Um, and people started make, or my friends and like roommates would like do something like, oh no, Malia can't. She has her money class. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, I was like, this is important to me. <laughs> But it just opened my eyes and my world to this whole world of financial literacy that is like information we need to know that we don't um, and stuff that can seem so complicated, but does it have to be? And I just was like lit on fire to not only like help myself, but like help whoever would listen to me. So that's kind of led me to where I am now. I love that. And, you know, we were talking a little bit before, you know, we actually hit record, but um, you were saying that you do work in like the world of finance. Yeah. So I do work in corporate finance, like my nine to five. And although they might seem a little similar, they are a hundred percent not. Like I studied finance in college, obviously, yeah. and like learned none of this that I needed to know for my personal life, which is not a bad thing. Like corporate finance is just very different, but personal finance is like also something we need to learn about that we don't learn in school. It's so true. Actually, that is such a big point that you make. And I think it's like the biggest reason why people find themselves in such like crazy situations and feeling like they never can get out of the debt that they're in, which is sad. Like, it's such a sad thing to think like, well, I'm just gonna have my student loans for my whole life. So, you know, no big deal. Um, but you know, why is it so important for you to, to, to help people with money, especially their personal finances? Well, okay. So like super short and sweet and obvious is like, this is literally life changing. (laughs) Not only change like your life, but like you might have heard money people say before, like you can change generations with this stuff. So I just think it's so important to educate people to like put to bed like falsehoods that they might have grown up learning or they hear in all the noise like the media, social media, friends, family, um, and just lead them down this path that's going to allow them to prosper. Um, And normally that's something that like that path is what's like not deemed as normal. I'm doing air quotes. Um, the normal thing is to have a credit card and have your student loans for the rest of your life. That's just how it is. That's how everything is. Like, that's okay. That's the life we live. And yeah. that is I, just absolutely um, why I want to reshape how people think of success and wealth and all of it. So that's uh, that's really incredible because it's like a really empowering thing to be able to help people do. And, you know, why do you think it is that, that, people maybe just like aren't educated. Like it's one thing to sort of not be educated about your system, 
but then also it's like another to like, do you think it's like they don't really care or they just like don't really know the impact that it could have? There's like a lot of different things. I think one, like you could grow up not talking about it. So you just see life as Mm -hmm. it is. And you know, like you just kind of go through the motions. And I think that's the biggest thing is that so many people think that, you know, like these things are all just normal. Student loans are normal. A credit card debt is normal. And there's just really no desire, I guess, from the individual to realize like, wait a minute, maybe this isn't normal and there's got to be more. I mean, a lot of us are surely asking ourselves related to happiness and everything. Like there's got to be more than this, right? Yeah. It just, I don't know. It really takes that individual to like go beyond that and say, okay, if there's more, how do I find it? How do I start educating myself and all that? So I think it comes down a lot to um, the the person like the individual stepping outside and being like it, w- there's got to be more and like where do I find it and how do I start going down a different path mm, that's really really important so the people that come to you and like the, you know the people that you help with their money like what are some of the stories that are like that they're telling themselves like around money like what was their like if you I don't know if you can generalize this because I'm sure everybody is so different but like what's their like aha moment of like you know yes I need to get this on track Yeah, I think a lot of people feel like the student loans are on their back and it's kind of like, you know, maybe they're scrolling through. And a lot of people I found through Instagram. And so, you know, normally when you think about finances, you don't think about a young 24 year old wearing pink on your Instagram page. (laughs) So I think when a lot of people like maybe come across me, it is kind of their aha moment. Like, wait, like she looks like me. She does like, she went to school like me. She works a job like me and she's doing it. Like I can do it. When people start to see other people like themselves doing it, it gives them that hope and courage. Like, okay, I can do it too. It's not just these millionaires who won the lottery or, you know, like that sort of falsehood that we tell ourselves. So I think when you start to see someone else, it's similar to you. It gives you that hope and inspiration. But I think a lot of people are feeling that like weight of debt, crushing them and again coming back to like there's got to be more like I I need to get out of this like how do I do it um and a lot of people just realizing like I've never talked about it I don't know anything about it and I want to and maybe my outlet isn't doing it myself as far as books or blogs or that sort of thing so I want you as an individual to help me and hold me accountable and that sort of thing. So I'm, I might have veered around your question a little bit. I no, I, no, no. I think you actually answered it perfectly because it's all of those things. Like, I feel like it's not like a one size fits all for everybody. And like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, like, I love this topic so much because I think money is so important. And mm-hmm. like, I've been keeping a budget since I used to be like a server and a bartender. And so I'd have like money in, money out, cash, just like going around everywhere because you just, have so much cash when you're a server and a bartender. And uh, that is what I miss so much about that job. But um, I was like finding that by the end of the month, I had nothing left. And I was like, what is happening right now? Oh my gosh, you're literally hitting like it on the head. That is something people are like, you know, they have this epiphany moment too. That's like, okay, I graduated college. Now I have this great job. Say, put an arbitrary number, $50,000, like which is more than I've ever made. And I've been doing it for five years, but what do I have to show? Yeah. I have nothing. It's coming in. It's out. I'm out of control. Like I have no control. I feel like I get paid and it's all gone. And people want that control and they want to start building something beyond themselves and just like materials around them. But like beyond that, I've been doing all this hard work. And this is um, a quote that I heard and I can't remember where it came from, but it just like blew my mind and still does. It's like, we spend 40, at least 40 hours a week working for money. Why do we not spend even like five minutes a week planning it and thinking about it oh my god that's so true and it's yeah. not even hard like no. yeah when you and know so, sort of sorry go 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 ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. you go you go no. I, was, I don't even know what I was gonna say I was just gonna say like you know yeah. when you kind of like figure out like I don't know okay for me I, I just started with like a, a spreadsheet and yep. I would track like every tip yep. like everything that I made like, five dollars so okay it wasn't five dollars let's be real but like okay like hundred dollars fifty dollars whatever and then by the end of the month so the first time I ever did this okay this is probably back in like 2013 Mm -hmm. or 2014 or something like that like I have budgets from all the way back then that I could tell you what I made every single year just by keeping my budgets which is amazing so if you already don't have one everybody like maybe start Mm -hmm. um but yeah and so the first month that I ever did it I was like okay let me just see you know, what I would make versus what I would spend. 
and have no control and just like kind of like to see where everything goes and like what I end up with. Like, it's probably not that bad. No, this particular month, this was like years and years and years ago. This is like the best month I ever had when I was serving money wise. I think I made like six grand or something like that. It was amazing. And do you know how much I had left? Nothing. <laughs> like I lived at home. Like I had no reason to not have nothing left at the end of the month, which just goes to show why we need you. Yes. You are the prime example. And to like give the listeners like um, something they can go and do right now. It's like exactly what you did. Take an Excel sheet and take last month's last, excuse me, last month's credit card, debit card, whatever you used to spend and pull it all into an Excel sheet. You can usually do that online at your bank and start organizing it into like, okay, here's what all I spent on gas. Boom. There's that. Here's what all I spent on grocery. Boom. There's that. And see like, where is your money going? Like so often people want to jump right into like, okay, like I want to make a change here. I'm going to create this budget. But if you don't know where you're currently at with like your spending habits, then you are just setting yourself up for success. You're just like shooting in the dark for these random targets that you think, which often what we think is so different than what our habits and spending show. So like the number one thing, like you just said, it's like we've worked together or something. It's like go track your spending and the path to see where you're at. And then we'll talk about moving forward and using that to build a budget to meet your goals. Oh, I love that so much. And you said something that was so smart right there, literally shooting in the dark. Like, how can you budget $200 a month on gas if you're spending five? Do you know what I mean? Like, then you're just going to continuously like, so one thing that I did notice in this whole process when I first started was that I did put unrealistic budgets on things Uh and I would get stressed when I would go over it. So my, like my gas, for example, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to spend $30 a week. I had like a beater car and it was like really cheap for gas and all that. And, um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to spend $30 a week on gas for this car. And it would be more than that. And I would get like really stressed. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to meet my budget at the end of the month. And then I started getting like scarcity mindset of like, there's Uh never going to be enough. And then you start to spiral. So like, you know, your point is so perfect because like that is the best way. I really think that's the best way. Yeah. If you're going to shoot in the dark and set yourself up for failure, then you're going to fail and get stressed and burn out and be like, screw it. Why budget? Like I'm going on with life as it was. So just take a step back and like start there. (laughs) uh, and move forward. Yeah. A hundred percent. That is amazing. Okay. And if you're a little bit like more advanced in the finance world or like your own money status and that kind of thing, um, what could be some, like an actionable step someone could take to, um, you know, maybe have like a little bit more abundance in their, in their money. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does. And what I would say is, okay. Like a hundred percent. I'm wrong. Happiness happens podcast. Like giving yourself affirmations and telling yourself that positive story about money. Like if we sit back and how many times I still even do it, going to be honest, sometimes it's like, Oh my God, I'm so broke. Like if you're <laughs> telling, like, you don't realize it, but like, if you're telling yourself this story, like that is what it like it is like, so start telling yourself positive things. Like I love taking a dry erase marker and putting affirmations on my uh, bathroom mirror. Like, start telling yourself positive things. Like I'm good with money. I have a budget. Like I'm in control, like those sort of things, but more important and granular, like, okay, that's great. But like, how can I really like bring more money into my life besides having this mindset, which is a great place to start about, okay, you know, money flows, it's going to come in and out. It will return is again, you can kind of look at your current habits or your budget is like, what are you spending your money on? Like, are you spending your money on things that are going to bring you a return? Are you, are you making investments? Like, and that can come in any sort of thing, not like an investment. Are you literally putting money in a retirement account? But like, are you spending money like on books to educate yourself, to get better at whatever thing in life? Are you spending money on like going to events that like really inspire you? That's good. You know, it can be in any way, shape or form. Yeah. And besides like things that are just like very materialistic items, which are not a bad thing. We can get to like that and your desires and stuff, but like just truly where your money's going, is it investing back into yourself and like your well being and your growth and that sort of thing? Because that's, what's just going to allow you to continue to um, move forward and take on new ventures that might bring in new revenue, you know, all of that. So I think really granularly, and I mean, I could even bear to do this more often by looking at my purchases and like asking myself, okay, is this really 
um, where I want my money to go. And if I want more money to come into my life, like, am I prioritizing that in my spending? Oh, I love that. You know what? That's <laughs> such a really good point. And I also think that like, okay, you just reminded me of something that I don't know if this will, I think it might resonate with some of, you know, who's listening right now because um, of just like the, you know, the industry that we're in. But so um, I just started with like a new business coach. Okay. And it's the most amount of money that I ever spent on a, mm-hmm. on a coach. And I literally was like, Oh my God. I was like, I'm, I'm going to be so broke after this. I'm like, this was this, I spent it. And I was like, Oh my God, this was a mistake or, but, but it wasn't, but like, I'm really excited, but it was a mistake. Like all these different things, just like you just said though, you know, taking the money and like actually like investing in like something you desire, something you want, and that's going to grow you and grow your business. Like it was like, you know, yeah, it was crazy. And it's literally the best thing that I've ever done. So, you know, being able to get to a place of like not feeling scared to spend and knowing you'll receive back. Yeah, exactly. You just said it perfectly for someone out there listening. Who's not like in the coaching world or having a side biz or something, but they're looking to invest in like someone like either of us to just, you know, be more well-rounded. It's less about like, Oh my gosh, she's, um, asking a thousand dollars to that. Like a and you picturing a thousand dollars leaving your bank account. It's not that it's your investing. And like that investment is going to help you see a return on that. Plus more, you're going to go beyond where you're sitting right now. And for like coaches who might be listening, like investing in things to grow our business. Again, it's the same thing about realizing like, it's going to take me to the next level. And I wouldn't be able to get there without this investment. Um, So true. Yeah. And when you're, and when you're selling the same thing, like, how do I feel comfortable asking this much? It's knowing and believing in myself. Like this is like the worth that this offer is. And I know I'm going to help that person receive that back plus, plus more, whether it's monetary or like uh, other things too. So it's on all ends of the spectrum about the whole investment in yourself. And you're not going to get to that next level without doing it. Exactly. And you know, just like you were like saying, you said it without like really saying it, money and mindset are like the two things that you need to have together. Do you know what I mean? Like you need to have like a strong mindset around money. And then, you know, to be able to bring in the money, you have to believe that you, that you deserve it. Oh my God. It's so true. And, you know, I think that with the the thing you were talking about with like a thousand dollars, like leaving your account, I, I really believe that when you spend money, you actually make more space for more to come back to you. Yes. I love that. I love that. So go there, home. everybody go home and spend all your money. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm kidding. No, it is a place to just put yourself in that abundance versus the scarcity. Absolutely. It's so, so true. Um, and it's a choice kind of at the end of the day, like, you know, we kind of get to choose, um, maybe we don't get to choose how we feel all the time about every single thing, but we get to choose the reality that we know we have a choice to, to make a different choice. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. That was like so many words all mixed into Absolutely. one, but <laughs> um, do you think that it's possible, you know, for all women to pay off their debt, no matter what kind of debt it is, even if it feels like it's impossible? Yeah, a hundred percent. And the, the way you're going to do that is by creating a, a plan for yourself instead of just sitting there looking at it with fear and kind of falling back into the, it's not possible. I'm just going to keep making these minimum payments for the rest, the remainder of this term of whatever it may be. Um, I think it requires a lot of like discipline and hard work and there can hundred percent still be the fun aspect of life. Like so many people fear getting on this financial literacy train and like really hacking away at their debt because they think that that equates to having zero life, no social life, no spending on anything else that you love. And I disagree with that. I think that you can really make big headway towards paying off debt far beyond the repayment plan that might be sitting in front of you at the moment. And I think that you still can prioritize the things that you really love and have a life. So it, it, it's not like, um, a mutually exclusive. I have no idea if I just use that right, but it's not. <laughs> two the other. I think I you did. Know. So like, but it does take hard work and a little bit of sacrifice. And that is what it is. You got yourself. Um, this sounds really harsh, but like you got here, so you're going to get yourself out of it. 
So it takes a little bit of hard work and sacrifice, but you can absolutely still have fun. Um, and this is like the, where the whole happiness thing rolls right into it is you have to determine for yourself what, and I, this is what I tell my clients, like you have to determine what brings you true, genuine happiness to spend on. It's like, for me, it's traveling and spending money on like my business, if you will. It's not necessarily for me spending a lot of money on hair and beauty and eating out. And that's just me. There's nothing wrong with any of that. It's just me prioritizing what brings me like true happiness. And so yeah. I'm going to allocate money to spend on there when I'm working towards these huge goals and maybe cut back in the other areas. I don't have to cut back on everything. I know what's important to me. I know it's not so important to me. And so it's really sitting down and deciding for yourself, like, what is that that brings me long-term happiness? Not like that short-term trying to keep up with the Joneses, trying to keep up with this other girl on Instagram. It's what brings me true happiness. And so I'm going to work that into my plan along with like going slaying at my debt. Oh, I love that so much. That's really, really important because like you really, it's really interesting because it makes you think about the things that are actually important to you. And it makes us think about like, especially this time that we're in right now, like I, I, where I am in the world, I'm just outside of Toronto, Canada. So where we are right now, we're not even allowed to go anywhere. So like, you're not spending your money on anything. So this is quite literally like the most perfect time to tackle your finances because you have no, I mean, it's the situations are different for everybody. Certainly. I mean, if you have like more digits and you've been laid off and all these different, like there's so many different scenarios. So I'm, I'm trying not to generalize everyone's, you know, financial state, yeah. but when you don't have to pay for all of the extras, you know what I mean? Like gym memberships are being put on hold. Like if you have kids, you probably aren't paying for their extracurriculars, like all of those different things. Right. So, you know, this is a good time to take a look, like you were saying, and like take inventory about, you know, where you're spending your money and what you're doing. Like, uh, yes. Yeah. A, a perfect, like, go do this right after you're done listening. Like we said, pull your last credit card statement and track it into your buckets. And then two, take those buckets and assign like a number one to 10 on a happiness scale of how much happiness it brings you. Like on your eating out bucket, like I would put like a three on my travel bucket, I'd put a 10 and then organize them. And then you, there, boom, there you see, like I actually have people do that exercise because I think it's so important to see like, here's where your money's going. Now, how actually happy are you with all of those things? And what you prioritize high, we're going to keep a priority. And what you don't, we're, that's where we're really going to cut back. And I'm going to challenge you to cut back there because you just told me it doesn't really bring you happiness. So let's put it towards debt or your savings or your investments, like that sort of thing. I love that. And, you know, a little bit off topic, but well, can't really go anywhere right now, but on your travel bucket list, where's next? I'm just curious. Everywhere. I know. <laughs> like Southeast Asia. Hmm. Yeah. That would be awesome. That whole region want to do it all. Like, oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. No, I'm just like fully just curious. Of, like I love, I love to travel as well. It's one of my favorite things. I work in like a industry, like a travel industry um, uh, in my nine to five. And um, it's like the actual best to just sort of, you know, pick up and explore the world is like a crazy, crazy thing. to uh, do. Yeah. Right? And yeah. even better is when your trip is paid for before you even leave. <laughs> uh, when that trip does not follow you home on the credit card, like that is the ultimate vacation. That is what's up. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. So we spoke like a little bit about like affirmations before and you know how sort of incorporating affirmations into your life is, is one way to sort of shift your, your mindset. But you know, how could we begin to change our story, the stories that we tell ourselves around money? Like, where does that begin? And how do people start to like work through all the years of conditioning put on them mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of money? Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. So I think the world of money can be very overwhelming. There's a lot to like tackle. And when you come from a place that you might have been telling yourself this other story that you can't do it, or it's not possible for you, or you're never going to get out of debt. It's like, just let's just start like at, with one thing, you know, you get all these things. Okay. Well, I need to pay off my debt and I need to save and I need to invest and I need to, you know, it's like, let's just start with one thing. And, and that for me is really creating these goals and making them so actionable that you can say this month, I'm going to focus on this one thing. 
and I'm going to create that habit so much that next month I can move it on to something else. And mm -hmm. what I just did last month is now a habit running in the background. And so instead of, you know, you're, you're trying to change your mindset, you're trying to change your story, but instead of getting so overwhelmed and falling right on your face, right at the beginning, just give yourself grace and just start with one thing. So if it's paying off debt, I'm going to pay off my very first smallest debt, which is a thousand dollars that I owe to my mom, you know, and here's how I'm going to get there each week. I'm going to pay this, you know, and so you just starting with just one thing. I think that as you're trying to shift your whole life and start this new journey, um, it's so easy to get overwhelmed. So if you just allow yourself grace to break it down and take it bite by bite, like you'll get there and things will start to like really start rolling. So I feel like that's a great way to, I don't know, start really changing things. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I think that's really important. And you know, it's interesting because it's like, you know, a lot of the time, like, I don't, if you have a lot of debt or like different types of debt, it can, you can look at your stuff and you're like, oh my God, like, where do I even begin? So yeah. it's great that you mentioned small, starting at the smallest part and like making an actionable plan to get there. That's awesome. Yeah. That's something that as far as like getting specific about paying off debt now that I teach, there's a couple different opinions out there or ways and none of them are wrong. I tell people like you get caught up in like, okay, which way should I pay off my debt? And it's like, just start doing it. You're deciding to pay off <laughs> You can't lose but real quick like what I teach is the debt snowball so it's it's paying off your debt in smallest balance mm -hmm. kind of ignoring the interest rates for the time being and putting them okay so my car is five thousand dollars then this student loan is seven then this um other loan that I have is 15 I'm starting with the smallest balance and I'm going to chip all my extra money into that and chip away at that and then go on to roll all that money to the next one so I'm paying all my minimum balances on all of that. I want to quickly pause this interview and tell you about the Handel Group coaches that I've had the honor and privilege of bringing onto the Happiness Happens podcast. With every conversation and interview, I've learned something so impactful and so life-changing. Inner You Life is the online coaching course from Handel Group that gives you the tools to get yourself unstuck, wildly happy, and thriving where it matters most to you. Your relationship to yourself, career, love, body, money, time, and more from wherever, whenever. Recommended by Hugh Jackman, Dr. Mark Hyman, Forrest Whitaker, Elena Brower, and hundreds more. Taught in MIT, Stanford School of Business, and 50 plus institutes of learning across the world. Visit innerU.coach and use the code happinesshappens at checkout for $75 off. Now, back to the episode. And then it's just going to roll one into the other. And that, I think, again, just allows you to do those bite-sized things and see that, like, progress more so than if you were to start with your largest interest rate, which might be a huge freaking loan. Yeah. And you're chipping away, but you're not seeing it. So it all comes down to the, like, kind of the mindset and the psychological thing that you're, like, you're, you're seeing your progress. You're getting excited. Like, you're really getting on um, – on board with that and you're going to like progress quicker even though the math might say like a different um approach that is just mine because i think you see the more mo most success in the long run with it and also it's like more of like um like it feels almost more rewarding in the sense when you see yeah that number come down you're like oh my god look at freedom <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. like check it off your list like another yeah. thing with goals is like make them visual put them on your um refrigerator put them somewhere we can see them every day that they're going to remind you and stay forefront and something like i i'm a girl that loves a to-do list i love to check something off oh. so like break it down that like every payment you can make a check mark or you know something that's like a reward to you that you're seeing your progress you're seeing your hard work and you're motivated by it oh i love that <laughs> would you say that that's like one way that you can attract more money into your life oh 100 percent. like goals yeah so i've even fallen into this before of just kind of starting to float through when i don't have something that i'm working towards so i think that goals are a huge way that you can like get really aggressive with them and then it's kind of like okay like 
wow, this is really out there. I need to like kind of figure out how I can meet that. And that motivates you to go find different ways and things like that. And just the whole mindset in itself um, definitely can attract more money into your life. But I always like think that I will have something that I'm like working towards. I, I'm debt free right now and I have an emergency savings fund and all that sort of thing, but there always is going to be something that like I'm working on because if not without that like priority list of like um, prioritizing my money and where it's going, like you can so easily just kind of fall into, I don't know, this like circular motion and without challenging yourself, like you're not going to grow and continue to make more money or, you know, the, the whole thing. So yeah. I love I think goals are so important. I love that so much. I can just see the passion when you're talking. So for everyone who's listening to this right now, it's also like recording, we're recording it like on video too on my YouTube channel. And um, yeah, the excitement is like my favorite part. And I think that's what I love so much about doing video interviews is like you get a whole different experience. You know what I mean? You get to like actually like, I feel like we're sitting beside each other drinking our water and except like mine's from like this like big cup that's like metal and whatever, but mm. Yes. And yours is so much nicer, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's a totally different like dynamic. And I feel like you get to like know each other a little bit better. I don't know. Yeah. I feel yeah. like, I feel like I'm always just like talking to like my very best friends though, when I'm talking to anyone on this show. And mm-hmm. so yeah, no, your vibe is awesome. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> you know what though, I have to say, um, I was going to say this more towards then, but I'm just going to say it now. So when I think one of the first times you and I spoke was you launched your program and you had like a series of stories and I actually watched and read the entire thing. And I messaged you and I was like, this sounds incredible, first of all. But secondly, I just want you to know that like I've gone through your entire stories and actually listened to them and they were amazing. It was amazing. That is like sales 101 done right. Hats off to you, sister, because honestly, it was so good literally so much because I know exactly where you're at like click 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 like I yeah. to, it means the world <laughs> yeah you know it's so funny that you say that because um so you know sometimes like when we're doing anything or when we start anything like our best friends our closest people to us are always kind they can be kind of like mm, I don't really understand what you're doing but like, I'm here to support you and like you know good 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 job, but like, I'll just be over here. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but like my, my industry is a little bit different. Like not everyone is into it. And like, that's totally cool. But, um, I launched a 30 day, uh, 30 days of happiness challenge starting April 1st. And I tagged one of my friends in it. And, um, I was saying in the story series that I started this series in particular because I wanted um, to create some positivity and like change the conversation um, that the world is having right now just by injecting a little bit more positivity. And I started off that whole story with saying something like, um, yep, I got laid off like temporarily from my job, blah, blah, blah. And um, so I was speaking with her today and she's like, oh my God, she's like, you got laid off. Like I didn't even know. And I was like, man, it was in my stories and you saw and you like screenshot it. And like, I was like, you clearly like it's tap, tap, tap. It's so true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I just love to like your, now I'm just like going completely off overboard, but your mission about like happiness and positivity, like, uh, I feel like in another life, like that would be my go-to as well. Like I, I want my aura to be money, but also just like radiating like happiness and positivity because like we just all need that every single day, no matter what's going on. Yes. People want to be around happy people and like, yes, it's okay to be weak and not happy sometimes. But like when you look for the good in people, when you look for the good in the situation, like everything even going on right now, in the world like you can find happiness in a million different things and it's just that is contagious and like I just I just uh, I'm so big on like I don't know being grateful finding happiness finding the good like and I'm sharing making my day right now well, yeah you made my day thank you for saying that and it's you know it's it's so true and it's like okay if you think about I read this thing today and I have I was in the process of sharing it but I haven't shared it yet but it literally said something along the lines of like, we're all being forced to stay home and we're being forced to spend time with the people that we love. And if that's not okay with you and you have a problem with that, then you need to reevaluate your priorities. And I was like, I was like, Oh my God. I was like, it's so true. Like, you know, but not everyone gets to live with the people that they love. So it's a different story, but you know, I think that it all comes down to like perspective and you know, it's your perspective in anything. And we, 
I'm such a firm believer and I preach this all the time. Like we have a choice. You have a choice to feel the way that you want to feel about something, but also always giving yourself the space to feel the feelings that you have. But then once you've felt them, okay, we're going to pick ourselves back up now and we're going to figure out how to, you know, do this now in a way that's, you know, a positive way in a way that's, you know, bringing light. Cause we all have a light within us. How do we share that light with other people? And the more we share light with other people, the more our vibrations raise up collectively and we're just thriving. So I don't know. I know. I love, I just love everything about it. I am on board. (laughs) (laughs) I am on board. Okay. So on the topic of that, then the complete opposite side, how could we feel less guilty about wanting more money? Um, and accepting the money that we know that we deserve, but maybe we don't know yet that we deserve. Yeah. So I definitely think a lot of us tell ourselves a story that like the desire for money can be like the root of evil, you know, that whole sort of thing. And I think first of all, recognizing that it's not at all, it's how we like treat our money. So more money can allow us to do so many more positive things in the world, like giving, supporting, Mm -hmm. like all that thing. So desiring more and the most money is like not a bad thing. And we should not be like shamed by that. Um, so knowing your like worth and your value, I think is really core to having that confidence and like, you know, kind of making your declaration, like I want more money and like, I'm not ashamed of it. And here's like, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, okay. I'm, a million going a million places in my head. So remind, <laughs> remind me of the second part of the question. So more of just like, you know, feeling like worthy of the money that you want. Yeah. I, it, yeah, it just, this kind of a hard question, I guess. And that's why I'm sitting here stuttering, but just knowing like your worth and what you're providing and what you're putting out in the world and that you're doing good with it. And that it's true a lot of times like the noise that we hear about all this money and the evil that it brings it's just like that is like a pluck of one in a million you know stories wealthy people and like stories yeah and so it's just it all comes down to like ultimately knowing your worth and that you have like good intentions and like you are gonna do the best that you can with that money I don't know no no that that. makes sense no I don't think you did I think that makes a lot of sense because it's like I think that like feeling worthy of money comes down to so many different things. Like there's a whole, people have whole different beliefs about money and like people have stories that they've heard growing up, right. About like their parents saying like, you know, you only get money if you work really hard. And it's like, Oh, okay. So I guess if I don't work hard, I'll never have money. Like, you know what I mean? And so it's like, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. You know, knowing that you're, it's like an inner belief of knowing, like you said, like of, of knowing that you're worth it. So that, I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Being real. Sometimes I just don't, all the answers just don't. Come That's okay out. though. I think that you do like in, in, in like the perfect way that you're meant to deliver them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> and honestly, I don't think that there's like a one size fits all when it comes to something like that, because I think no. that like, for sure. And like, For I don't sure. know, I think money stories kind of come up and then they go away and then they come up and they go away. And as you level up in your life and your business, they come back and then you kind of have to like remind yourself, I guess, I feel like this is why what you do is so important because, you know, you, you're able to really help people through the really hard times that they face in their personal finances. But then also if you have someone who's, you know, in their business and if you're leveling up in your business, a lot of like your, your insecurities or like limiting beliefs or whatever you want to call them, come back and kind of follow you. And then you're here to be like, well, no sister, like bring it down. You know what to do, you know? Yeah. Life is like, I feel like I've said this so much recently. Maybe it's a sign for something, but it's like life is just this never ending, like balance of everything, whether it's finances, health, like happiness, you know, it's just always, we're always trying to find this balance. And so I think just, Sometimes you have it together, like sometimes you don't. We're always working to be better, but um, give yourself grace and we're just always working out this balance. We're never going to be like masters at it. <laughs> I love that. Um, and it's so true. I think that, you know, we always kind of expect that it's going to be like one specific way or we think that, you know, um, 
we've seen X, Y, and Z success. We should have it always and forever. And like, we should, a hundred percent we should. But the reality of life is that the universe throws us shit like this situation we're all in right now to kind of remind you that like, (laughs) you know, you can plan all you want and you can hope all you want, but I'm just going to shake it up a little bit and see like what's going to happen when I, when I do, I don't know. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. I'm, I also like, I've, okay. I've been a pretty like spiritual person always. And I'm more recently like actually owning that part of myself. And so I feel like I'm always like, but the universe decides, yeah. but they do. It does. <laughs> it does. The universe always has a way. It always has a way. It always has a way. Okay. So, um, I would love to know your thoughts on, because, well, we've spoken a little bit about, you know, happiness and mindset and and that kind of thing, but specifically around money, how could you get from like a scarcity mindset to, um, an abundant mindset? Yeah. I, okay. So I'm going to go back to a little bit what I touched on, but like one literally, literally really granular thing. I love the whole affirmation thing. I put the freaking, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> um, dry erase marker on my board and I'm telling myself positive things. Um, I'm also, I'm totally going to repeat myself here. Looking at like what I'm spending on and is that providing like abundance in my life or do I feel like it's holding me back and kind of resulting in like scarcity stuff so it's really almost taking like a deep dive into ourselves and our current position it's like what are we like unhappy with right now like what are we looking for and how can we alter like very specifically with our finances like what we're prioritizing in our life to help shift that um so that's a little bit broad but I think really being able to be honest with yourself and what's going on and what's bringing you unhappiness and shifting into that abundance. Another thing that I really want to say, and I think this definitely relates is you have to define what success looks like for you. So it's so easy to like see someone else out there with, and I'm going to like go there with all these material things, like the new purse, the new shoes, the big house, the nice car, And that doesn't always equate to success. And it definitely does not equate to wealth. You can make as much money in the world. And if you're spending it all, you are not wealthy. The person making $50,000 paying themselves 10% each year at retirement is going to be more wealthy. Like, so you have to define like what success looks for, for you. Is it working four days a week instead of five? Is it being able to take a vacation? Like, what does it truly mean for you? And that is going to provide the abundance in your life because when you're out here comparing yourself to like, oh, but I don't have that, that, or that that they have, it's like, do I even want that? Like, no, like I could care less about that new designer shoe, pump, heel. Like, you no, know, but like I'm out here like comparing myself to someone else who like looks so cute and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're so much more successful. You know, that sort of thing. So you really just have to be honest. And if it's sitting down and pulling out a piece of notebook paper and it will change throughout your life. Like, Things will change. It's totally. a never balance. This year, this month, like what does success look like for me? And that's what I'm going to strive for. And that's what's going to bring abundance into my life. If it's being able to like t- take a 30 minute walk at night, like that is more abundance in my life. Like, so oh, I, I think it's so much. It's, yeah. Really figuring out for you, like what does success, how do I find success in my eyes for me? Not what I see everyone else doing. I love that. And I really love that you said, um, you know, what does success look like for me this month? Because Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. We can plan a year ahead. You can plan five years ahead. I'm sure everyone at the beginning of January had their five-year plan and their five-year plan is probably a hot mess right now because of what we're doing right now. So, you know, and so it's like, I think that that's so important because if I think of my own self, like for me, success every single month isn't hitting a specific target in terms of like number for my business. This, Mm -hmm. like the biggest success right now for me is understanding my like truest wants and desires on a soul level. That is success for me right now. It has nothing to do with money. Do you know what I mean? But just like you said, like from that place, bringing in the abundance, like that is what's up. Yeah. I love that. I think I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And that's why I like with the goals thing too, like everything I love to break it down, like by the month, 
by the week, if you will, like, because things are ever changing so fast. It's like, we get this grand plan that we're like, all right, here's 2020 for me. Here's what I'm going to do. And it's like, okay, can like, just tell me what I need to do today. <laughs> like, I was <laughs> so confused by that, like, interview question that was like, that standard, like, what's your five-year plan or something? I'm like, do people actually have it? Like, oh my God, how am I, I know? Gonna, like, I and know. there's nothing wrong with not knowing that. Like, you're actually, like, I think, like, a little better off to, like, go achieve one thing this month and then like, you know, take it from there. I don't know. I'm so, uh, I agree I'm, with you without even really realizing it. Maybe until like now, like I really am about the, like, and it sounds bad too, but like kind of like near term, like what can I go get and accomplish today? Because that's going to cycle into a habit in the background and I'm going to grow from there. Yes, so. exactly. You know, I used to stress myself out all the time because I like, you know, I, as a, as a business owner, you think that your business should have a five, 10, 15 year plan. And like legit, mine does not. And other people all like seem to have that. And I would always be like, oh my God, like this is why I'm, why I could fail because I don't have a five year plan. But no, it's like, you know, you have like your bigger visions of things that you want to happen. And I think that when we plan too much, sometimes it takes like the, it takes the, how are you going to get there out of it? Do you know what I mean? Like, I like to be open to all the possibilities of all the things that can happen by just setting that one vision and being like, yes, that's what I want. How are we going to get there? Who the fuck knows? But we'll get there. <laughs> no, I'm right there with you. Like real talk. I'm like, sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what my business looks like next month. Like, it's just like, I don't know. You but do that's what okay. With what you have. And like, exactly. Exactly. And like, like you were saying before, like things are constantly like shifting and, you know, moving yeah. around. And so you could have that plan for your business for six months and then experience something that shifts it drastically. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Just because that that's the plan that you've set out for yourself doesn't mean that that's the plan that needs to stay. Yeah. Right. Yep. yep. Get that vision and like drive towards that. But like, it's not always going to be a straight line. So just, yeah. Yeah. Be ready okay. for the curves. Oh, I love that. Um, okay. So this is my last question for you. Okay. Can you believe it? This time it's, flew. No, it did. It really did. I can like how, Oh my gosh. I, just, I know. I just looked at the clock and I was like, Oh, okay. So this, I know it was so much fun. Um, yeah, I just love your energy though. So <laughs> I knew that this was going to be so fun. I mean, just by like, from when I first, when I first laid eyes on your Instagram account, <laughs> I love it. such a loser. Um, no, but even like your Instagram handle, little miss finance is so cute. Like, yes, thank you. I'm here for it. And you're just so authentically you, which I love and like never lose that because that's so important. That'll drive your business much more than any plan. As long as you're you and you always stay you and like, don't, you know, get tainted by all the things that other people are, are, you know, doing because you gotta do it in your way. You gotta do it in your way. Oh gosh, girl, you're so welcome. Okay, but my last question for you is um, a question that I ask all of my guests when they come on the show. And um, it's how can, how can someone begin to create a little more happiness in their life every single day starting today? Okay, this is like one of my favorite things. And like I said, like I love the whole happiness positivity realm. Like I wanna be there. I like wanna exude that. I have um, a journal by Rachel Hollis, if you ever heard of her. Start today. Start today. Five things every day. Okay, being real, does not happen every single day. But strive every day, five things that I'm thankful for. And then it goes on to some dreams and stuff. But it's like five things that I'm thankful for and like can receive and just like bring happiness into my life. If they're the smallest things. A lot of times avocado toast falls on my, like oh, my five things. Yes. Like. And that just starts my day with this whole mindset of like, I'm thankful for the little things. Sometimes they're the big things. Like if it's raining and normally that's like a crappy day, I'm thankful for the rain today and like the break, you know, just having those things and like bringing that like gratitude in your, to your life and giving that as well, just sets your whole day like off on the right path. And I just think it is so important to go when you like look for the good, you will find it and you will be overwhelmed by it. And the same will happen when you're looking for the bad or being like the pessimist in the situation. So I think always searching for the good, it will start to overflow you. And you'll realize like literally the other day I had this moment. I was like, I'm so thankful for my decorative hand towels. Like they're so cute. <laughs> so I'm like, that is like the smallest thing. And I just like had this moment of joy. Like, and so it was like, 
I don't know, when you search for the good, like you will find it and it will overwhelm you and just always continue to like, um, have that grateful piece of like your heart and like giving yourself grace and others grace. Like that will just bring positivity and happiness into every single day, no matter what's going on. I love that. I like, I don't know. My heart is so full right now. I'm so grateful for you for, you know, for coming on to here and for sharing everything. But now I'm getting ahead of myself though, because I do have to ask you, um, where can our listeners find you? Okay. So definitely on Instagram at little miss finance. Um, I have a blog as well. It's at, you know, www.thelittlemissfinance.com, but catch me on Instagram. That's definitely where, um, I'm most active and I'll be there. I don't know, 24 seven. Aren't we all? So <laughs> right. where else do we have to be? Nowhere. No, I'm just, yeah. kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Oh my goodness. But yes, thank you so much for coming on today. I'm so grateful for you and for your time. I am like, yes, overjoyed that you asked me to be here. And this was literally so much fun. I know everyone always says that on past like, Oh my God, thank you. So much fun. But yeah. legit, <laughs> I feel so full right now. Like me too. I'm gonna need to go take a walk to cool it off. I know. I'm like, what should I do now? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it's almost nine o'clock here at night. I'm like, do I go for another walk again? <gasps> like, should I just go to do a lap around the block? Like, <laughs> oh, my <gosh. laughs> oh my goodness. Thank um, you. No, thank you. And um, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to this week's episode. You have to go back to the beginning, re-listen to the whole thing again. There are so many nuggets of information in this episode, jam-packed of things that you can actually do starting today to make a significant change in your life. So be sure to share with both of us what you love the most from today's episode. We're so excited to hear from you. You can just tag us on Instagram. And um, have a beautiful week. And remember that happiness happens when you're least expecting it. Thanks so much for being here today. I hope these words have brought you inspiration, insight, and a bit more happiness. Please leave a comment or review if this episode resonates with you. I would be so grateful. Until next time, remember that happiness happens when you're least expecting it.